Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and today we've got a bit of repair. I'm in the kitchen of the main house here and I've got the central heating timer on the wall here which I'm going to try and repair. Um, a little bit of a backstory behind that once I get down onto the workbench but uh, in the first instance here's what's actually wrong with it. So you've got a nice big LCD here with a few annotations on it etc and the time in the middle. But if you look a little bit closer, let me try and zoom in here, you've got some text at the top there which is hardly readable at all, funny looking hieroglyphics etc. It, actually it's uh, not displaying properly, um, I was supposed to say plus one hour HR and if I start uh, pressing the screen there you can just sort of see the, the digits start to come back to life. And uh, we've got the day at the top is supposed to be lit as well. Uh, so yeah, it's acting funny. And there's supposed to be some annotations down the left hand side here. Or the right hand side as well. Telling you what mode the device is in. And if you press this, you sort of get a, a clue at the top of what's happening. Continuous, that word's meant to say. And then you've got the, the date and, and day. But the annotations aren't even appearing at all. I mean, it still works, but it's just not right. And here it is, it's a Honeywell Home Expert THR850S. And it's got a little panel at the front here, which you would normally take off so that you can access whether you're wanting to program the device or put it in run mode or set up the, uh, the times that you want uh, various actions to happen, etc. On or off for the boiler. And... Uh, that's about it and there's a couple of the buttons which come through the front panel there that would normally be accessible day to day like uh, extra hour would just give you if it happened to be switched off it would give you an extra hour or two or three just at the press of a button there if the heating went off and you didn't really want it to so there's a little bit of a backstory to this there always is in my gear so let me get into that very quickly so I used to use this Vera home control system and it basically a Z-Wave system which controlled valves on the radiators like this here electronically and uh, wirelessly and uh, you would set up all your rules and times and temperatures in the software in the box here via a web interface and that would uh, program the valves to go off and on or uh, to set a particular temperature at a particular time of day all that sort of thing and they'd be fully regulated etc by these valves here and I used to use before that a Devolo system but you know I've been using that for about four years and it's just too many bugs. Devolo fix one bug and break something else and honestly for the past four or five years it never worked flawlessly. I was always working around something. Uh, you'd have radiators uh, getting too hot because these valves lost control of uh, the target temperature and yeah. So then I switched over to the Vera system just the other day actually you know couple of weeks ago if I'm honest and I bought a new set of TRVs, I dumped the Devola ones and I, I bought these ones instead and I've programmed it all up to mimic what I was using on the Devolo system and the bugs that were in the Devolo system were not in the Vera system but the Vera system had its own set of bugs so I just got sick of it and I thought look I'm going to park this lot here to one side, go back to normal timer after five years and uh, wait until they've caught up, got decent firmware and then I might go back this later on. So just in the past few days I went and bought this device here. They had one left on the shelf. It's what I was wanting. I looked up uh, obviously the website beforehand. I knew exactly which model I wanted to. Went in town, come home with this one, um, plugged it in and it worked. But then I noticed the LCD was uh, playing up. And honestly I'm not about to drive all the way back into town uh, to get my money back. I just thought you know I'm just going to tear this apart. For all the cost I'm just going to tear it apart and see if if I can fix it. So hopefully I can split the unit apart. It obviously splits here. There's a couple of tabs that I can see down there and down this side here which look like uh, 
Yeah, I've got a couple of tabs at the bottom as well there, so it looks like I can just bend them out the way and the whole thing should split. I'm hoping that the LCDs mounted on some zebra strips and their patch just needing resettled in a new position or cleaned or something like that. I mean, it is a brand new unit. It was all shrink wrapped the whole lot, so it is brand new. So I'm, I'm hoping it's something simple. So let's tear it apart. Okay, that's most of the tabs just about out of the way, so I'm thinking it should just about come apart now. There we go. And we've got a single PCB in the back there. This is mains uh, powered uh, battery for the backing up the configuration once you've set it. This is the interface to the back plate on the wall. Uh, which is actually it's more or less compatible with this back plate here uh, that was that was on this unit here so I was able to reuse the old original back plate so it's really easy to switch out and you've got an 80 mega um, MCU in the middle there and obviously the, the main relay here the single channel relay which is a couple of contacts a changeover contact on here and then some power supply stuff over here and that's about it. So I need to get the board out and uh, let's uh, expose the LCD. And that's the board out. There's again just four tabs just holding it in so it's dead easy to get out. It's not particularly clean as you can sort of see there but uh, never mind. And uh, now I just need to get into the LCD. This is the backlight in here, LED backlit there. There's the two connections for it there. Um, can't really see how it's connected down onto the main board yet. It looks like it's definitely not through hole, so uh, it's a good chance it's a zebra strip. So I'll try and get this uh, top cover off here and try and expose the LCD. And it looks like actually it just this just lifts off by the looks of it. Oh, there we go. Ah. The LED backlighting module looks like it wants to come with it by the looks of it. Might need a bit of persuasion. That's it. Yep. Yeah. And there we go, it's exactly what I thought, a couple of zebra strips, one down one side, one down the other, and there you've got the corresponding um, pads on the PCB there, right to either side of the backlight module. So I think I'll just try cleaning up those pads there with some alcohol. Like I said, the PCB was pretty dirty, so hopefully that's it. all it is, just need a clean up. And the zebra strips here, I'll... Uh, take them out and uh, clean up the glass as well with a, a little bit of alcohol as well and hopefully that will fix it. They looked, uh, they got me in their gold pads, but they were slightly dirty. I could see that. Uh, of course, they're not going to tarnish, uh, but it did look like they were a little bit dirty there. So that's the PCB done. So now I'll move on to the LCD. Well, just a little bit of alcohol again, just very lightly. Just clean that off there and the other side. glass itself might as well give it a little bit of a, a wipe as well and once it assembled back up again so a bit of reassembly now of the main unit and then we'll test it out <laughs> 